Good evening, my Heatley families. It's Mrs. Ross. Thank you so much for joining us this evening um, as we have our second informational night for our parents and families and students of Heatley. Tonight's session is going to just solely wrap around academics and some, some health and safety. We're gonna do this presentation again tomorrow. Um, on Monday of next week, we're gonna take two sessions, one in the morning and one in the evening to talk about just special education. And then next Thursday is gonna be an overarching meeting as well at six o'clock. So for tonight, um, I've kind of rerouted the presentation that I did last week um, to include information. Actually, it was uh, a week and a half, almost two weeks ago on the 29th. Um, but tonight's information has a few more details that I'd like to share with everyone. So you're gonna see on the screen that there is a Chris Cruchetti um, I'd like to introduce him to all my families. Chris is our communication specialist um, who has been working with us uh, throughout COVID and helping to make sure that our reopening plans and communication to parents and staff and students has been uh, fluid. Um, so we welcome Chris to the Heatley family. You'll see him here on Mondays and Tuesdays, but Chris is always available to help, to help us out throughout the week. So at the end of the presentation, Chris will turn his camera on and um, start fielding the questions that are coming in. So you'll notice that there's a link at the bottom of the YouTube uh, streaming that if a question pops in, in your mind as I'm presenting, please feel free to click on that link and type your question in, question in and I will hopefully be able to get to it at the end of the presentation. So I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see. All right, so we still say it's tentative reopening plan. We are continually to um, building this plan. Um, as I said two weeks ago, it was a framework. And over the period of the next few weeks, we're going to start filling the holes in of this framework. So it is still tentative. And it's really actually quite fluid. It's a living document. As things arise and as more guidance is given, we can continue to build this plan. But for tonight, we're going to talk about academics and health and safety. I just want to remind all my families of the guiding principles that we wrapped our reopening team around. I know that's probably um, looking a little funny with me moving that around. So we want to make sure that we always adhere to state level guidelines, ensure health and safety of our students, faculty, and staff. And these are the two websites that um, have been um, then our guiding principles have been our, our um, go-to when we have a question on how we should make sure that we're maintaining the safety of all students. The second guiding principle is we want to make sure we provided parents with an opportunity of choice. I cannot emphasize this, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more in this presentation tonight. Parents have a choice. We want to make sure that our plan is flexible and fluid regardless of the changing conditions and create the st stability and structure for all our students. And finally, we want to make sure we maximize instructional opportunities for all students, but make sure that we prioritize in-person in instruction, especially for our younger uh, learners who need more assistance. I had said this two weeks ago, we are um, going to amend the 2020-21 school calendar. We are going to front load all our superintendent conference days starting September 1st. Now, this information will be emailed to all parents. It's going, it's on our website. We'll make sure that social media, um, we will continue to try to communicate this with all parents so that they, they are reminded. So on September 1st, 2nd, 8th, and 9th, just staff are going to be in the building. It's really, really important to learn from the lessons from the spring. So we want to bring staff in and we want to build their capacity to be able to teach all learners, maybe in person, hybrid or remote. So those first four days. So on Thursday, the 10th, we're going to do um, in actually Friday, the 11th are going to be two orientation days. They're trans, um, transition days for students. A schedule will come forward when we know the cohorts that are established and the time that they're going to be in the building, just like the teachers and all of us in society, we've had to learn this new norm. It's really important that we teach our children the new norm and the new procedures and protocols in place for safety. So bringing them in in smaller groups will help us transition them back to school. 
The first regular school day is going to be Monday, September 14th, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. The school day is going to be condensed for all grade levels. We'll, we'll touch base on, on that as well. And so the Board of Education will make this recommendation and resolution at our next meeting um, on uh, August 27th. All right, so health and safety. I just wanna kind of cover some health and safety high points before we talk about the academic piece. This plan is built around to ensure that all persons that are the building are, um, keep a social distance of at least six feet. You're gonna see that we will have um, reminders throughout the building on the floor, the flow of traffic. Classrooms have been reconfigured to allow six feet of space between individuals and house fewer students in each room. All employees and students are required to wear a, a cloth face mask or just a mask that covers the nose and the mouth when social distancing is not possible, unless you're medically unable to wear one. The school nurse will have a supply of masks for staff and students and that they invent they forget theirs. Students are gonna be permitted to move their masks during different parts of the day of instruction. Um, so we have built in mask breaks. Um, they'll also be able to um, remove their mask during breakfast. Social distancing must be maintained during these times. The golden rule is if they're in motion, the, the mask needs to be on. So if they're going to the restroom or they're coming into the building or out of the building or they're getting up to sharpen their pencil or a teacher's coming over to answer their question or a student comes near them, the mask needs to be on. And that is per the CDC guidelines. Daily health screenings of all employees, students, and outside visitors need to be conducted. A, a self-health screening application is gonna be provided for all parents and staff free of charge and more information on, on that is to come. Parents will be required to attest via this app to daily health screening. So this will include taking the child's temperature each morning prior to going to school. And anyone who has a temperature greater than 100 will need to stay home. And that's not just COVID, right? That is guidelines um, outlined by the New York State Department of Health that if your chi child has a fever, that they need to be fever free for at least 24 hours. If you're suspect that your child may have COVID and is running a fever and has symptoms as outlined in the CDC, you should contact your physician. The school nurse will do random audits of temperatures um, for quality assurance. So um, on occasion, she will randomly audit students' temperatures. Um, any student or staff who is su um, suspected of signs of COVID will be assessed by the nurse and sent home for follow-up with a healthcare provider. During this time, a separate location has been created um, to provide for any potentially ill students and staff while they await pickup. We're gonna train on proper hand and respiratory hygiene, facial covering, social distancing, and symptom, symptoms. We're gonna have markings on the floor, may be implemented for the common areas and gathering places in which direction to travel. We're gonna have posters reminding staff and students about social distancing. School visitors will be restricted to those required for school business only. Unfortunately, um, having an open building is not possible during the pandemic. So we will have to limit that just to the to school business only. All right, so let's talk about academics. I know this is what parents are, are curious about. For pre-K to sixth grade will be daily in-person instruction. Breakfast is gonna be provided from 7.40 to 8.10. Students will eat breakfast in their classroom. Lunch is gonna be provided as grab and go at dismissal at one o'clock. So all students when they dismiss will have a grab and go lunch. And depending on the classroom size, because every classroom um, is a little bit different, students are gonna be grouped in pods of approximately 12 students. They're gonna learn primarily from their classroom teachers, but may be supervised by other school personnel during times of live stream instruction to an adjacent room. Students will rotate their pod to their assigned teacher, and the condensed schedule with static of arrival and dismissal will be sent to parents. Seventh through 12th grade is a hybrid schedule. So all seventh through eight special class, special education students, so self-contained will attend in every person, um, will, will attend in person every day, I apologize. Um, seventh through 12 students attend in person two days a week and attend remotely two days a week. 
Grades seven through nine are in a cohort and grades 10 through 12 are in a cohort. Cohort A is going to attend Mondays and Thursdays. Cohort B is going to attend Tuesdays and Fridays. Wednesday will be full remote for all students 712. Wednesdays are going to be designated for elective classes as well as support services such as PE, R, A, I, S, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to deliver breakfast to our 7 through 12 kids right after that first block, that first period. And lunch will be provided as grab and go at 1245. And that's when the 7 through 12 dismiss. Now you're going to see that the secondary is dismissing 15 minutes earlier because we recognize that a lot of our 7 through 12 students have younger siblings that they're responsible for and need to grab them um, on their way out. So they're gonna dismiss a little bit early. In addition to um, distributing uh, more information in the coming weeks, we're gonna let folks know, we're gonna stagger kids in certain doors and what doors they need to come in and out of. Depending on, on the size of the classroom, again, we're gonna be grouped in pods of approximately 12. Students will learn primarily from their classroom teachers, but must be supervised. And teachers are gonna to rotate to their grade level. Students are going to remain in assigned area. What I would like to emphasize between the seven through 12 hybrid schedule is that they, that schedule will maintain regardless if they're in person or remote from home. So if a student has English period one or the first block, it doesn't matter if they're in person or remote, they will still attend the class. So say you have English on, um, you're in person on Mondays, your cohort A, you have it period one. On Tuesdays when you're remote, you still have English at eight o'clock. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that in a minute. So I know that a lot of parents have been talking about a full remote learning option. This is where parents have choice. And I really want to explain this a, um, a little deeper. So uh, parents can choose if they prefer their child due to personal reasons um, to be fully remote. So you may, families might have concerns about their child's health and safety or the impact on a family member. If a parent or guardian decides that they want, to, uh, want their child to participate in a fully remote learning setting, setting, setting it must be noted um, this instruction will be rigorous. It's not gonna be as equivalent as, as is um, on site and in person, but it will be uh, it will be rigorous. Remote instruction will be synchronous and asynchronous lessons and engagement. Um, full remote learning option must meet all criteria outlined in New York State Education Department's um, regulations, and this includes daily virtual interactions with their instructors per the schedule and completion of all required course material. Well, let me explain that a little bit more. If you choose for your child to uh, be fully remote, as I mentioned before, they still need to attend their classes remotely every day. So they still have to follow a schedule. They still have to log on and their teacher and, and check in and, and complete assignments. So, um, what we learned from the spring is that it was very difficult for students to maintain a routine. And we know kids need routines. Kids need structure. So we will provide structure. New York State regulations are not waiving chronic absenteeism or, um, or the 180-day calendar. So we need teachers to lay, on, lay eyes on children every day for attendance and make sure that they're attending their classes. So, Fully remote, they can do it from the comforts of their home, but they're still gonna be responsible and held accountable for checking in every day for every class. The instructional areas of focus of core areas are ELA, math, science, and social studies, and any required courses for grad graduation, such as health. There's gonna be limited elective offerings available to the full remote learning model for our secondary students. Parents will need to notify the district no later than Tuesday, August 18th. There is an enrollment form and it's going to be posted on the website, the enrollment form, as well as um, through social media. Any parent that does not complete this form and opts for the child to do fully remote will remain enrolled as an in-person for the first marking period. I can mail a paper copy if, if um, a parent is not comfortable, but please just send me an email at reopening dot, um, at green org and I will send you a, um, a paper form. 
Parents are going to be required to complete this survey in the notification. The reason why we're having parents um, fill out this form is that we may need to reassign staff. So students who are enrolled in the full remote learning will be assigned to our only online learning for the entire marking period, 10 weeks. So if you opt your child into doing the full remote learning option, you have to commit for the, the entire marking period, 10 weeks. Um, because we are trying to juggle staff for in-person and remote. It's gonna be expected that secondary students who are enrolled adhere to the instructional schedules as their in-person peers. So as I mentioned, right, if they have English period one at eight o'clock, then they need to be log logged on into the classroom. Parents who choose in-person instruction can shift to full remote learning model at the, until the, for the remainder of the marking period at any time. So say, your child's in person and um, they become ill or they, um, someone in the home has to be quarantined and they need to be quarantined and you would like them to go to the fully remote model. You can shift into the fully remote model, but you're gonna have to um, commit to keeping that, um, keeping that model till the end of the marking period. When parents wanna shift their child back to in-person instruction, you're going to need to let us know a week before the end of the marking period, and we will communicate back constantly what those dates are. Sometimes the marking periods are 10 weeks or nine weeks, but we will continually communicate. All students who are enrolled in the full remote learning option will be required to attend virtually, so check in with their assigned teachers every day. Teacher, the teacher assignments are going to be established at the end of August. Students who are in the full remote learning option will be responsible to, be responsible to participate in assessments, including those designed by their teacher, district, and New York State. And students must complete and return all work assignments. So you need to make sure that you are being that traditional student, student but remotely. To continue, um, including the use of district uh, technology, students enrolled, in, the, in this model will not be eligible for in-person Healy events, including athletics, athletic events, school functions, or in-person school gathering fundraising events. If any clubs or extracurricular activities are offered that may be able to participate offered virtually. Please note, right now, extracurricular activities and athletics have not yet been organized, so we're still waiting for more guidance on that. The full remote learning option is going to stay in effect for the entire school year, unless COVID restrictions are lifted by the governor, state ed, or the Department of Health, and families provide required notice of intent to re-enroll the child in the on-site program. Returning to on-site school will take effect at the start of the next marking period. All right, so this is the big, this is a big uh, question, homeschooling. There's a big difference between homeschooling and full remote learning. Homeschooling is regulated by New York State um, Education Department. Families who prefer to not have your child attend the Green Island District in person or participate in the full remote learning option also have the right to, to homeschool school their child. I want to clarify the difference because so many people say we're homeschooling. For clarification, there's a distinct difference between homeschooling and full remote learning. Per state regs, if a parent chooses to homeschool their child, they must submit an individualized home instruction plan, an IHIP, to me for review. Um, this plan will outline your child's curriculum, what you will be teaching, what resources you will gather, and the amount of minutes that you'll be teaching this. So I approve the, the IHIP, and the parent is solely responsible to generate these resources and lessons and assessments outlined in the state regs. The district is not responsible to supply any materials or curriculum to a homeschool student. If you want more information, there is uh, more information on the New York State web, um, website. So again, there's a distinct difference between homeschooling and the full remote learning option. If you, uh, if you request to me that you are going to quote unquote homeschool your, your child, then you must submit an IHIP and um, you are responsible for all lessons and materials. Um, and the student um, is no longer enrolled in the school district. So please be, you know, you know, be mindful of the difference. The full remote learning option, we are still providing and dispensing instruction by a certified New York State teacher. On Monday, 
Um, we're going to have two meetings, one in the morning and one in the evening for special education students regarding um, the plan moving forward. So I don't want to spend a lot of time. I want to take that time on Monday um, working with my special education parents about um, supporting students with IEPs and 504s. So as always, students with disabilities are provided a free and appropriate public education um, to a high quality general education in programs and services. So uh, students with disabilities are gonna continue to receive these programs and services in, according to their IEPs. And again, Monday, August 17th at 11 and, and at six, we're gonna have a separate live stream just to outline all special, special education. So attendance and grades, I talked about this a little bit um, ago. In, in the event of a remote, if we go fully remote, and right, something happens, the metrics tick up and, and we end up going fully remote, students are gonna be expected to participate in online activities to their classroom uh, remote instruction. So synchronous learning. So synchronous learning means your teacher is live, right? The, the teacher's standing there saying hello to your child and is teaching a lesson. They may, um, um, participate in a video conference and they have to complete time sensitive online tasks such as answering questions or completing an assignment. The teacher is going to collect daily attendance based on particip participation and report this to their principal. So we still have to take attendance every day, even if they're fully remote, if we, the district has to go fully, um, fully remote or if they're in the hybrid. As always, the attendance committee reviews our five weeks uh, every five weeks. And we um, implement targeted interventions for students who are chronically absent. As for grades, we'll continue as we did pre-COVID. Grades K through two will resume a scaled score of one to four for all subject areas. And grades three through 12 will resume the numerical grades to 100. So that's not gonna change. So students are gonna be held accountable and grades will be taken. All right, so full school closure, metrics take up. What happens if we go back to where the building is closed? So given the possibility that some communities may experience spikes, cases of any point during the school year, which may prompt a short or long-term closure, we're gonna implement the following schedules for fully remote. So in this remote instructional model, synchronous direct instruction are going to be provided in content areas. In grades K through five, schedules be adjusted to balance live direct instruction from the classroom teachers versus the screen via screen time and independent work time. Um, therefore, time allowance will um, for K by five virtual direct instruction are shorter than for in-person. Student schedules in grade six through 12 will reflect modified master schedules. So, um, so that students do not encounter conflicts with the synchronous lessons for different subject areas. So while recording live lessons is still essential to students unable to attend at a scheduled time, teachers will ensure that their students are directly engaged with them and their peers in this learning on a regular basis. We will, if, if we see the metrics rising and we anticipate that we may have to go through another school closure, we're gonna make sure we're, we're more prepared with learning materials and go bags of resources. To ensure high quality um, hybrid learning, experience, we will standardize the use of single online learning platforms. The district is going to develop a common coordinating set of guidelines for teachers to follow. Right now, we use Google Classroom, and every student in the district K-12 has access to that. If we end up having a school closure and we are in a full remote learning model, so K-5, Monday through Friday, Friday will be direct instruction online, with, with their teachers from 8.30 to 11.15. And the student will have independent work and the teacher will hold office hours and extra help. Grade six through eight. So these are recommendations based on if a child was tutored. So direct instruction online with teachers based on student schedule. So eight to 12.45. And again, 12.45 on will be for um, extra help with, with teachers and office hours. And the same for grades nine through 12, Monday through five. Uh, Friday, direct instruction online with teachers and on their uh, schedule from 8 to 1245. What you're going to see here is that if we have a school closure, the hybrid model just becomes fully remote. We maintain the master schedule, we maintain the structure uh, of the day and the accountability for the day. We just have to modify our elementary students because it's not developmentally appropriate for them to sit in front of a, a computer from 
8 to 1 o'clock every day. All right, so we're going to take some questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen in a minute. Remember, if you prefer the district to mail you the reopening survey so that um, you like to enroll your, your child in the full remote option, there is a link on the website, or you can email me at reopening at Green Island. We can get that to you. We can mail you a hard copy. You can also fill out this survey, this reopening survey about the full, um, full remote learning option at greenisland.org. We will share these links with you again on Facebook, social media, the school district website, um, and we will get it out in an email electronically that um, we, if you have an email address listed in our system. So we'll continue to try and send things to you, but again, sometimes electronically things don't work out right. So if you need a paper copy, please shoot me an email at reopening at greenisland.org and we will make sure we get a paper copy to you as soon as possible. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen. Uh, Chris is going to join me because he is looking at the questions um, and help me um, answer any um, anything that I have not covered. So I'm going to stop sharing. All right. I hope I did it. Are we good? Yes. Hi, Chris. So say hi, Chris, to our Heatley families. Good evening, everybody. I am excited to be part of the Heatley team. Yes, it's been wonderful. So thank you for being here. Do we have a lot of curious minds out there? We have a, a few questions have been submitted. A couple were addressed already in the presentation about uh, fever protocol, things like that for students who don't feel well. Um, one question generically, will a letter be mailed home to all families, like a, a general back to school letter with a lot of this information about school start date and what the schedules will be for those students? Yeah, so what, I, what I'd like to do at the end of next week, when we know how many students are going to be, or at least a ballpark number of students um, that will be fully remote and which ones are in person, I'd like to send home a, a um, back to school letter that will briefly outline schedules. Um, obviously, I can't um, send home a 30 page packet to all families. Anything um, that I haven't answered or you're curious about on the website is the reopening plan and there's also a frequently asked question section so a lot of questions that were asked two weeks ago on the first presentation questions that are being asked today schedules etc cetera, etc cetera, all on that um, on the website but yes i my intentions are at the end of next week i will once i have a better understanding of how many students are going to be in person and how many are going to be fully remote i will send a letter home with a very brief um, outline of the schedule, as well as promise like what doors kids should come in and are going to arrive and be dismissed at, and um, room assignments as well. Perfect. Um, and just a little other note about the survey. So the link has just been posted on our Facebook page. It is also live under district news on the homepage of our website. And it's also on our reopening updates and information page for families. And again, we and um, on the website also say to email reopening if you need a hard copy. So um, do that as soon as possible and include your address when you um, send us that email so we can send it to the appropriate location. Yeah, um, sure the only other great. question. I was just gonna, I'm sorry, Chris. So make sure if you, when you fill it out, if you want, if you're requesting a paper copy, um, make sure you include your address. We wanna make sure we have the correct address on file as well. It's really important and email address. Um, and we'll make sure we update our system. We want to make sure that all parents are receiving communication. Yes, absolutely. The only other question that um, has come in so far, but feel free to um, keep submitting them, is will a kind of traditional things like school banking take place in some capacity this year, kind of a return to normalcy of sorts? At this juncture, I don't, um, I, I don't have an answer. Um, I would say not right away. Um, it all depends on um, what happens with the metrics and if we have a spike, if things decline. So at this, uh, at this point, I would say not right away, but if we move in the right direction as a community and as a region, we could probably sl slowly build those things back in. Okay, those so are the only questions that we've received so far. I know Mrs. Ross already said this, but please also continue to submit questions. 
we'll continue in future forums to answer these questions. Um, so stay tuned to other forums. And then um, we also did post a, a comprehensive FAQ on our website earlier today that answers a lot of questions about teaching and learning, health and safety, a lot of those critical questions that um, families need answers to. So Chris, I, I did, looking at the questions, there was a question from two weeks ago that I never got to about water fountains, um, about how we keep them safe and um, sanitized. The district is actually looking right now to replace a couple of our water fountains with those water bottle, um, water bottle refill. So they're touchless, right? So a child would have a refillable water bottle, put it up to the machine and would fill it. So we are looking into replacing one to make sure there's one on each floor so that we don't have to worry about children using water fountains. Um, I had mentioned two weeks ago that we encourage parents to send their children with a refillable water bottle. So we're looking to replace those. Um, somebody had asked if, if school reopens, um, if they reopen and schools go back to normal in a month. I did mention it in my presentation that Obviously, if the governor or Department of Health or CDC lifts all restrictions, yay, right? We're excited for that. But until, until that happens, we will continue with moving forward with this plan. And uh, I know I, I touched base. If your child has a fever per Department of Health, those guidelines still stay in place, right? Your child needs to be fever-free for 24 hours. All right, so I'm looking at, I know that there was one about a specific one, a letter in the mail. Um, we should get that out to you. Um, I'll draft at the end of next week and get out to you um, early the, the following week. All right, if there's no other questions, please feel free to continue to click on that form. I am doing this presentation again tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Um, Chris will make sure that the answers to these questions are on the frequently asked questions part of our website. Um, you'll see that the website has um, um, some links and tabs where you can look at the full reopening plan as well as the link to enroll your child in the survey for full remote option. I hope everyone is well. Um, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this and, and participating. As always, I'm always here. Uh, shoot me an email, give me a call. I can answer any questions. I love, I love uh, talking with my parents and my students. And thank you to Chris for being here and uh, moderating the questions. So you'll see Chris more and more as the weeks unfold. So I hope everyone stays well, be healthy. We miss you and have a great night, guys.